Y'all know what it is. Your favorite cousin, I'm checking in. Young JLC, Miss Shot Nigga, Shot Shot in the building this morning. Look yeah. here, man. We ain't finna hold up and we ain't holding back for nobody. Cause this go around, we got some uh we got some big steppers up here with us, right, Miss Shot Nigga? That's right. Now listen, uh, as you know, we are so close to this presidential election and people are like, what is it gonna be? How you feel? And you know what? This morning we get to expound on it because we got some professionals in the building who know all about it. This morning, we have our own White House correspondent, Miss Ebony Mick Morris. Morris. You gotta whisper it. I know, I love saying your name. I always say Mick Morris. <laughs> it's the first time I mentioned, I said Mick Morris. Morris. And also alongside her, we have another one, real stepper. We, we bought her some shoes today because she's going <laughs> to step on something at all times. <laughs> U.S. State Representative, Miss Jasmine Crockett. Yes. Good morning, ladies. What's up? What's up? Hey. Hey. What are we doing? Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Man, I'm doing good after I saw 23,000 people descending upon ATL. I mean, what is going on? Vice President Harris drew like... One of the biggest crowds she's had yet so far, but yet we in a tight, tight, tight race. Yeah, listen, it's not about crowd size. It's about who shows up to the polls. Yeah. So, you know, everybody wants to tell us, like, she up in the polls, she down in the polls. The only polls that matter are on November 5th. So while we are having fun out there, while we getting hype, you know, when Obama steps to the mic, it's always a good moment. Um, it's important that we recognize that there are real issues, and this isn't just about entertainment, and it's not just about going out and having fun. It's about making sure that our lives are going to be on the right trajectory going forward because we know that this Supreme Court, Trump Supreme Court, has continuously set us back, whether we're talking about repro, whether we're talking about our civil rights, or whether we're talking about LGBTQIA community. I think it's important to acknowledge the fact that you were named national co-chair of Kamala Harris presidential campaign. So yeah. congratulations on that. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I, I know some people is like, what's happening? How, how is the wild child? <laughs> how does she get named? But let me tell you something. One of the things that the vice president always says is that we must lift as we climb. Mm. She doesn't just talk the talk. She walks the walk. And so as someone who is young and allegedly upcoming in politics, it's not just about her ascending. She is reaching back and making sure that I am in position as well. And uh, I can tell you that she is a mentor, a friend, and uh, someone that I trust wholeheartedly to lead us in the right direction, um, not just because of what I've seen up close and personal, but when people start challenging her blackness. Mm. Right. One thing they don't do is challenge mine. And so there's a lot of people that she could have decided that she wanted to elevate, and she chose me. And so that tells you a lot about where she is and where her head is and who it is that she wants to invest in. Thank you. I, I definitely appreciate that. That was a spill right there. You know what I say? Real spill? That was a real spill right there. We appreciate that. Listen, if you're just tuning in, man, we got a very important guest in the building this morning. We talking politics, all things politics this morning, the polls. It ain't how many people at the polls. But it's who at the polls. Y'all make sure y'all stick around. We're going to keep it locked. Young Jock in the Streets Morning Takeover. All right, we back at it. If you're just tuning in, Young Jock in the Streets Morning Takeover. Miss Shanika. Yes, sir. I got a question for you. Okay. So, what are some of the things or some of the policies that may have grasped your attention uh, that has come from Harris, Vice President Harris? I mean, the main one at hand is the abortion stance. I mean, definitely a woman's right to choose what it is that they want to do with their reproductive organs. Now, here's my question to either one of you, Miss um, Ebony or Miss Jasmine. You know, I, I, how is it that any woman would want to give that much control and power mm -hmm. to the government by way of propaganda and hype. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't care how popular you are. I don't care, you know, if you got the best catchphrases in the world. Mm -hmm. But how can any woman decide to vote against that very thing, your reproductive rights? I, I'm, I'm so baffled because as a man, I'm just like, yo, it's such a touchy subject that when it comes up, I'm always like, how could you go against it? How, why is it that women are going against this? You asking the wrong one. Listen, because because I'm not on that side. But I'm saying, um, but you so may hear because people are always no, I've, I've standing not, off with I, you. I will I will tell you that I've not really run into women that feel that way. I will say that there is a lot of misinformation 
out there in general that has people, whether they're women or otherwise, Mm -hmm. voting against their interests. When we talk about rural America, a lot of times rural America is voting against their interests, but it's because people are not fully informed about what's going on. So, for instance, there are so many women that still believe that if you have an abortion, it's just because you hide in these streets and that's all it's about until they're like, well, I didn't I didn't believe in a woman's right to choose until I was having this miscarriage. And they were saying, well, they couldn't do a DNC. They couldn't get it out. And and so I was sitting there and I was becoming septic. Like, I, I didn't understand it. That's what, what happened with abortion. Right. Um, or like the people that got caught off guard with IVF. They're like, well, wait, well, 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 wait a minute now. Now, we paid good money for them eggs and, and froze them. And, and what do you mean? Right? Like, so it's one of those things where it's like, until it hits you, until you decide that you're going to do the full research and not let people play in your face and tell you that this is only about promiscuous women out here doing things that they shouldn't be doing, which honestly is nobody's business regardless of what the situation is. But I think it's just a lack of information that we're dealing with. And the more that we inform people, the more that we win. So how does she grasp the, uh, in, in, the, the church people? The church people, because some church people, they say they got a hard stance on that and they will not turn away from it. How, how is the uh, campaign going at those people and making sure that they make it to the polls to vote for Kamala? Yeah, I mean, listen, she, she grew up in black church. Uh, she was just in Atlanta at Black Church. Um, you know, here's the thing about Black Church specifically. Black Church has been the epicenter of politics, has been the epicenter of our civil rights. And at the end of the day, when I talk to anybody, I mean, my Black pastor rides with me ten toes down, Freddie Haynes. Um, the thing is, we talk about just the freedoms. Like, you can't link up with the dude that is coming after us as Black people. Right. So they may not agree with everything. And that's the one thing that we have to get across is that when you are looking for your politicians and your preachers, stop seeking perfection because they will let you down every single time. time. So it's not about whether or not you agree with everything. It's about whether or not you agree with the majority of things. And if you believe that this person will move the needle. And at the end of the day, church person or not, ain't nobody telling you you have to get an abortion. You don't have right. to. So we're not trying to mess with your beliefs around that. But don't then put your beliefs or impugn your beliefs on somebody else. And literally, we have women that are dying. And we know that specifically in Georgia. But we also can look at the record and we know what it was like before Roe v. Wade. And after it was struck down, like the numbers that are coming out, and we're talking about how many infant mortality deaths that have occurred across this U.S. since the Supreme Court struck Roe v. Wade down. It is disastrous. The number of stories of women that are saying that they have to wait till they are near death because doctors are scared of getting sued um, because they cannot help them. And what determines that number? I mean, I'm coming from someone who was struggling, trying to have a baby myself. And I remember when I had a miscarriage, while all this was going on, I literally was like, thank God I'm in the area that I'm in in D.C. Mm-hmm. Because had I been in another state, I could have died right there. And it was already painful anyway. And then I got to go through that. I really think black folk, people, period, not just black folk, Amer- Americans, period, really need to look at the numbers and the data. Sometimes you got to get out of your feelings and emotions because when you look at black folk, most of us, I believe over 50% of us live in southern states. Texas being, I think, one of the number one states. Then you have Georgia, North Carolina, than anywhere else, right? North Carolina. And these, some of these states are states with some of the worst policies, right? Some of these states, even Mississippi, where you have some of the highest poverty rates, right? Where you have some of the highest unemployment numbers. And in many of those, and I'm not telling you who to vote for, but you got to see whether you have a Republican trifecta or not. What is keeping you? I can go to Louisiana and point to things that have been happening. So it is important that you come out and that you vote and vote early because I was going to ask you about what are some of the voter suppression tactics that you've been seeing. I'm hearing about robocalls people getting saying, don't come out and vote because if you were felon or former felon, that might lock you up. I've heard of police standing in front of um, polling places with rifles and people people not knowing if you're an officer, you're not supposed to be within 100 feet of those polling locations. Mm -hmm. What are you hearing? I mean, listen, it depends on where you are um, because Texas just made it absolutely lawful for um, these poll watchers to roll up and have their guns at the polling locations. Um, And that is a form of voter intimidation. We also know that they've started to put out ads in our black 
papers putting out the wrong dates and the wrong information. So again, it's about making sure that you are sourcing your information from the right space. But even just going back to the abortion thing real quick, in about a year and a half after the overturning of Roe, we had 26,000 pregnancies that were the result of rape in Texas alone. 26,000. Alone. Alone. And we all know that rape is always underreported in the first place. Absolutely. Not to mention just because you get raped doesn't mean that you're going to get impregnated. 26,000. So lot. you can't tell me that you love the Lord and all this other kind of stuff or whatever. And then basically have somebody be victimized by a criminal and then have them be victimized by the very government that they are the ones that employed to protect them. Right. That is a problem. Really? And nobody wants to talk about the kids. Right. Nobody wants to talk about the little girls that are being impregnated as in in the in the face of rape. Like this is like it's like we're living in a third world country and I just need people to wake up. Like right. I need like and and I will the final thing that I'll say is that black people have always been good about minding our business. We are always <laughs> real good about minding our business. And so I think that that's one of the reasons that like it's like well no I don't necessarily agree with abortion maybe but like I'm a mind my business like that ain't got nothing to do with me and so I'm gonna keep it here and what we have is we have this project 2025 we yes. have this agenda where it's like you know what I'm gonna force my definition of Christianity on you but y'all are the same ones that said that Christianity justified slavery so I'm good on your level of Christianity and I don't want to know your Jesus right right but like this is what they're doing and so they're forcing us into this white supremacy Christian nationalism and they are impugning it on all of us, which it wants to whitewash us. It wants to get rid of our diversity. It wants to make sure that we don't have equity. It wants to make sure that we can't live the American dream and somehow come up from nothing and rise up to everything. Like I I just don't really understand how we as black folks specifically Uh, can decide that we're going to side with this dude. All right. So um, thank you for clearing (laughs) <laughs> those things up about abortion uh very informative i just want to um speak to a topic that's really been hot in the studio amongst us co-hosts here um the black men the black man vote um it has really <laughs> been fiery in here especially uh between me and shawty and shawty and jock All right, so what I want to say is I feel like black men don't really want to see a black woman in power. The ones that are struggling on the fence or coming up with reasons that they don't want to vote for this woman. I just feel like they will feel inferior to this woman. Now, I have seen plenty of efforts and even a plan laid out for black men that they are opting not to believe in. I mean, the rollout was very detailed and specific and will help you come up. And they still do not want to believe in this woman. Because the first question, when we see this whole rollout and we see this long forgiveness and we see all of this they're going to give us. I was talking to but she looked no, at I'm, me I, like I, I did. She okay, because I, 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 I do. Because we want because okay. then she can answer our question. Because my first my my first thing is, I seem like it seems like every time election season come around, okay. both parties okay. go to think about the black man. Okay. But all between that, we getting locked up. We're getting profiled by both sides. Our own people would do it to us, and they do it to us. And we seem like they're trying to emasculate us. It make us seem like we are not the heads and we and we cannot lead and they put so much in front of us and then they say oh well we're going to do this rollout we're going to give y'all this for business and that first of all who's going to pay for it how's it going to get paid for because we looking to war yeah this sounds great but who's going to pay for it and and, and and when you give something it has to be taken so it's going to come from somewhere that's our first question and are they just saying this to get us to get our vote and then skip out on us Okay, so so here's I, I love this I do, um, so first of all I don't buy into the fact that black men are the problem. I, I don't buy into that. I'm gonna be real with you about that because I think that black men are being discussed a lot more because black men are still the second highest voting block for Democrats behind black women. 80%. And I think that there is a fall off of men across the board. I think Asian men, black men, white men. 
whatever Hispanic men, I think that there is a fall off, but there's a highlight on black men because they are so solid for the Democrats. And so I think that it is unfair that we are focusing on them and we're not talking about the other men that are falling off as well. Mm. So that's number one. Number two, I will tell you that um, Trump has done a very good job. I'm going to just tell you, he's done a good job because he's targeted and he is distracted. And so um, when I hear things like emasculate, right, like he's spending time talking about who playing what sports. I, who cares? Like, what, please tell me. No, 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 no. Real talk. Please tell who me cares? how that. Is, who, please tell me how that's going to yeah, impact exactly you economically. Said. You say who plays what sports? If my little girl. No, no, no. no, 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 no I don't no, think no, you're no, missing no, the no, point. No, no. But, 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 first of all, he is distracting because he doesn't want to talk about policy because that's not something that we do on the federal level anyway. That is not what the president of the United States does. Right. But he doesn't want to talk to you about the things that will make your daughter's life better, which is the economy. He doesn't want to have those conversations because he doesn't have a plan. Okay. Remember, he's got concepts of a plan. Let's talk about so let's economy. so let so 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 let me so let me break it down real quick for you though. Come on. But because when you say emasculate, then I know that he is absolutely seeping in and he has people distracted about things that the president does not handle. So let me talk I about that. How we going? I got that from but, but but I'm, but I'm but, just... but let me say it. So also when you talk about who's going to pay for what, the Trump tax cuts they expire in 2025 unless. The Republicans control everything, which is why Elon Musk is dropping what a hundred million, the mil- uh, yeah, a hundred million, million dollars. Every- no, he, he's dropping a, a total of a hundred million so far into this election because Elon Musk is one of the richest men in the world. So yes, he does not want those Trump tax cuts to expire. But guess what? We don't make enough money. At least I don't to to be impacted by that. So when you look at making people at the top pay their fair share, we got enough. We have a multi-trillion dollar budget, not billion dollar, not million dollar, multi-trillion dollar budget that we deal with. And so what they try to do is they try to preach this scarcity mindset. It's the same thing that we're dealing with right now where the Republicans have not approved the farm bill because they're like, we want to cut $30 billion in SNAP when people only get $6 a day to eat in the first place. So you tell me if this dude understands our struggles when he's out here saying $6 a day to eat is too much and that is the Republican agenda. This is what they are doing. This is not what they're talking about. This is what I'm living and dealing with. And they want to act like, well, we can balance the budget on that $30 billion that the people that are only getting 6 No, you can't. No, you can't. Because guess what? The most that we've ever had run up on our budget, on our deficit, was under Trump in one four-year term. $8 trillion. And you know why? It's because you can't have a scenario where you say, well, I'm going to go ahead and take out some of our income, which is what he did. He took our income out. We got to put that income back in. So there is no, we can't pay for it. And when she's talking about investing specifically in small businesses, so long as those businesses are successful, it comes back multifold. That is the thing. You invest in people, and then people will definitely end up investing back in us instead of having people that are struggling, having them have their own businesses that end up thriving. Guess what? They then got to pay taxes. Guess what? Then they buying stuff. So that is what it's about. It's about investing in us versus pitting us against one another and acting like we brokety broke because we not. No, I love the plan where she rolled out. I just wonder who's going to pay for it. But when you say, all right, the way you girls are spitting facts uh, and coming Women. with facts. Women. Like to, Women. Ladies, I apologize. Facts. Are coming with the facts and you're spitting facts. I would like to hear more of that out of our president, out of our vice president who's running for president. Recently on the CNN uh, debate, I mean, it wasn't a debate, it was a town hall, mm-hmm. and they was, she was asked a question about um, she was going to implement a plan that will get people for price gouging during a, mm-hmm. a, 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 a pandemic mm-hmm. type state mm-hmm. when they price gouging now every time mm-hmm. we go to the um, grocery store. Mm-hmm. And when her answer was not an answer, she dodges a lot of answers. And for the undecided what? voter, she does. And for the undecided voter, how would you explain that? Because they're looking for a solid, concrete answer. I, you girls are spitting solid concrete you know, answers. Women! Ladies. I, ladies. I, listen, it is, Sorry. it is wild because, you know, the double standards. I, I'm going to just lay that out. No, I'm going to just lay it we out. We got to talk about that. Yeah, the, the double standard is real because he ain't gave no answers to nothing. Nothing. He ain't Not got nothing. no black male agenda. He ain't got, but but it's okay. But about it's okay. But I, I get it. I get it, right? Because at the end of the day, let me tell you why she can be effective as someone who can go after price gouging. Um, number one, 
they absolutely have already started to work on things such as this in this administration. Yeah. Now, I don't know how many of y'all ever had to live paycheck to paycheck, but I, I, I lived that life at some point in my life, all right, where you literally would be like, I can overdraft my account and it's all good because I'm going to get paid and it's going to go back in. But why were they charging us over $30? It'd be like $35 per overdraft. Like you go and you get some gas and you getting hit for like $35. And so it wasn't costing that much. Like the banks were just literally price gouging. Guess what? Under this administration, those fees came down. The junk fees when we're flying and it's just be like, well, Sam, my ticket was going to be $100. But by the time you pay, it's almost $200. They made sure that they had to get rid of that. So this is somebody, this is what attorney generals do. Attorney generals for states, their job is to make sure that they go after and do the consumer protection work. So this isn't something that is new to her. She's true to this. This is what they've always done. And we know that even with groceries, we she had recently, if y'all Google, a Kroger executive admit mm-hmm. that they were price gouging but you got to have somebody that number one knows how to know the difference and can see the difference in inflation and price gouging and she's done that in addition to saying we are going to come for you if you do it but here's the deal people want to act like everything is on the president we live in a democracy and so if the house and the senate ain't in order then there's very limited things that the president can do. And right now we have the most unproductive house and it is run by Republicans. So why in the heck would we want their leader to go? They can't agree with each other to pass their agenda. So why do we want him to be? They are ineffective and nobody can tell me a bill or a policy that he ever pushed. Everything that people talk about that he signed into law that was pushed by the Democrats who ran the House and who ran the Senate because we are the ones that hand out money, not Trump. We know Trump don't pay his bills, so we know he wasn't trying to send Americans no daggone checks. The only people that have the power of the purse is Congress. The Th- president... That's the answer we needed. That's and there you have it. That's the answer If I may have you, hold the room for a second. Hey, man, y'all make sure y'all stick around for more Young Jock in the Streets morning takeover. All right, you know what it is. We back at a Young Jock in the Streets morning takeover in the building with us. We have our very own... White House correspondent Ebony McMorris and also U.S. State Representative Jasmine Crockett in the building. We're talking about a lot of different things, and I'm 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 feeling really like good to be surrounded by so many intelligent, powerful women who stand on business. Mm-hmm. And speaking of that, it's interesting because before we went to break, you know, Shawty is uh, Shawty was asking the room, you know, all these different things about uh, Vice President Kamala Harris and why she ain't doing this, why she don't answer these questions in a certain way, or why don't she have answers for this and that. And it's so interesting because I'm pretty sure these women sitting here understand the difference, the plight of a black woman in Mm. America, the different social standards that they are faced with on a day-to-day basis just to be in in a position where in corporate America she has to work twice as hard as a white woman. She has to work three times as hard as any man in a position. And even Van Jones took the CNN to address that. It's like, you know, wait, Trump on one end, Kamala Harris on the other end, he broke it down. Kamala Harris and Donald Trump are not taking the same exam. Yeah. And I think it bothers people. They're not taking the same exam. He gets to be lawless. She has to be flawless. That's what's That's unfair. Mm, that That's, what's unfair. That's what's unfair. That's what's unfair tonight. That. That's what's unfair tonight. They're not taking the same exam. Look, she has policies. She may not articulate them perfectly every time. She may not put the stories in the right places. But she's fighting for actual ideas that will help real people. And he's talking about people's penises. And so they are not taking the same exam. And that's pissing people off. It's pissing me off. Yeah, no, I was just going to say that um, it, it's absolutely right. I mean, but but here's the deal. Regardless of the fact that she understands that there is a different standard and that the goalpost is constantly being moved, Mm -hmm. she is rising to the occasion. They were talking about the fact that she's not doing enough media. And so she went out. (laughs) She even went to Fox News and hollered at them like she is fearless. She is willing to rise to the occasion. They say you don't have a black male agenda. So what did she do? She rolled out a black male specific agenda. Every single hoop that they ask her to jump through and or jump over, she is willing to do it because she is about given that business and making sure that the American people know that she will work for them. I mean, listen, when you are looking at an election, 
you are looking at how are you running this campaign? Are you running this campaign and actually fighting to win my vote? We have more offices set up throughout this country in all the battlegrounds than he has. We have more surrogates that are out in these streets that are working. All I can tell you is that I don't know why anybody would believe that he would work for them when he's not even working to get the vote. This is the woman that came in July 21st is when President Biden made that speech and said that he was going to be uh, that he was going to be stepping aside and we were going to see Harris in a short span of time. We saw a woman that no one really thought she was going to be able to do anything. Everyone counted out. This is a woman that as soon as she got in position has raised more money than any uh, any person we have have seen. We have demanded the most from her, but we have not demanded the same thing from former President Donald Trump, who has had way more time to develop policy. Okay. Where is his policy for black men? No. Where's but we what we have seen, we've seen many Republicans say they still want to cut the child tax credit. But we have seen, we've seen across many states, many governors and legislators not doing anything on food deserts, not doing anything for different communities. But now you want to put all of this at your feet. I just want to encourage people. Not just to look at who is running for president, but to also look at who book governors. There are 11 gubernatorial races that are happening. There are 435 House seats up. I want people to look at that entire ballot and make a decision over what's good for them. All right. So before we get out of here, I just want to take the time to thank the both of you for being here. Um, you know, very busy schedules, especially right here. Uh, only a few days before this election. Uh, it is very important that people understand the significance of your vote. Your voice, it counts, it matters. You know, I just want to ask people to step up and be responsible and stop getting caught up in propaganda and, and just what you see on TikTok and, and, and social media. Do your own research. It's okay to do that. You know, a lot of times I feel like people are um, kind of pigeonholed by the people that they are uh, rubbing elbows with. They run with a selective group of people and I got to be on this particular boat to be in this particular room. And I just don't, I don't believe in it because I've been in some rooms and I've asked some people, hey, who you voting for? And they will not tell you. And that's the reason they won't tell you because they don't want you to, uh, they don't want to be foreshadowed by their beliefs or their preferences. So I just want to tell y'all, man, don't worry about what people think about you. You need to be thinking about your future. Think about your children's future think about your community and i'm gonna just leave it at that again thank you to u.s state representative jasmine crockett my partner that came here and you know what i'm saying handled it the way she's supposed to and our sister and friend also uh ebony mcmorris we definitely appreciate you for being the great uh white house correspondent that you've been to our platform and thank always chiming in when we need you y'all yeah. you know it's love and i tell everybody to vote look the largest voting block is our non-voters I need people to vote. So when we talk about people do this, people no, people have been have not been voting. Mm -hmm. I need y'all to vote and make sure your name has not been kicked off a roll yes. and vote early. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And I want to thank you, young ladies, young ladies, for coming in. You guys speak <laughs> with so much knowledge and you speak the facts. And I really enjoy taking that in. And I know as much spunk as you got mm -hmm. in the fire that you have. Every time you walk down them halls, Marjorie tells you, <laughs> walk up there to the other side. Oh, she she shut her down. She had nothing to do with you. She, she said nothing to the other side she of the said hall. Anything I, she said anything since. She didn't like it. It's like, hey, yeah. yeah. Marjorie, Marjorie, Marjorie tells you, Green, she be in the gym. <laughs> she, she's a big belt back. She, I think she turned her car in. I she ain't doing crazy. <laughs> Hey, if y'all want to check out, if y'all want to check out, hey, look, if y'all want to check out, shout out to coming the show is coming up. It's thirty years of comedy. Yes. We appreciate you and love you, man. Hold we gonna get out of here. Hold on, big back, big built back, built back, big, hey man, y'all crazy. It's love, man. Make sure y'all stick around for more. Young Jack in the streets, morning takeover.